in the Shuf Mountains of ancient Lebanon, a land where Christ himself walked, in the Christian community of Dal Amar, which really means the city of the moon, Frem Frem Bustani was born on January 12, 1903, just barely into the third year of the new century. Michel and Ayut Bustani welcomed him with love. This newborn Frem was Frem Frem the fifth, representing five generations since Eid and Isa and Frem, three Bustani brothers of another century, decided to use their given names as middle names in naming all their male progeny to differentiate the three branches, which now became three family roots. Frem stood upright from youth, as he is seen at age six, standing at the far right. Frem Frem had two living brothers, Alfred Frem and Francis Frem, with whom he shared a lifetime. In 1907, the oldest child in the family, Frem's sister Esma, married Khalis J. Saloon. She was the first Bustani who did not marry a Bustani since the 18th century. The Bustanis, you see, are a proud and noble family who kept family lines within. They produced bishops, professionals, landowners, and one of them even added a letter to the Arabic alphabet in the land that gave civilization its first alphabet. After Esma and her groom immigrated to the United States and Lafayette, Louisiana, Frem's brother Alfred followed. A second sister, Essene, left Lebanon, married to Bashara Shalub of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And then 1914 came and with it, the guns of August and World War I. Frem's father died when Frem was a child and his beloved uncle became a surrogate father to him. But Frem was the eldest child then left with his mother. Brother Francis was a young child of four. Alfred, Esma, and Essene were all in the new world. Frem was all of 11 years old and Lebanon under Ottoman rule for over 400 years, felt the scourge of war. Frem's family's wealth was steadily sold off for food and inflation made money almost worthless. A family fortune disappeared. With the family in need, Frem, not yet a teenager, set out to support them by trading one commodity for another. Bluing, that substance needed to bleach the white garments of the Muslim Arabs, was sorely in shortage. Frem realized that and jumped or rode into the opportunity. He bartered for food and clothing for his mother, his young brother, and his faithful and loving uncle. They made it through the war, and when it ended, 15-year-old Frem and his family were all fine but divided, some in Lebanon, some in America. In 1920, Esma and Alfred sent boat fare for their mother and brothers, and this was really Frem's ticket to America and to his dreams. It was not going to be a trip through Ellis Island like most other immigrants. Frem, Francis, and their mother came to America on the maiden voyage of the SS Providence. And in honor of the steamer's namesake city, they landed in Providence, Rhode Island. From there, they took the train to Lafayette. June 1920 was the time of Frem's new beginning. He was in America, passing through the Golden Door. Frem was 17 years old. He needed English lessons. He needed education because the war had cut out all schooling in Lebanon. His total American education was a few private lessons in Miss Email's parlor. Quick to learn, he was soon out on his own. He lived with Alfred and Alfred's bride, Faridi. First was a job in a bakery in New Iberia, 
making cream puffs. Was the bakery work prophetic? Then it was a small fruit stand. Then it was a small store on the corner of St. John and Simcoe Streets in Lafayette. Frem persevered. He was on his way. Brother Alfred joined him at that location, and with Alfred's established capital, they made the store finer and larger. They call the store Bon Marché. It developed into a department store, and by the end of World War II, Frem, Alfred, and Francis were partners in Bustani's department store. They were among Lafayette's leading merchants. Then one morning in 1947, Frem took a coffee break at 10 o'clock in a small cafe across the street from the store and found his friend Joe Huval having coffee there too. Joe owned Huval Baking, which produced Evangeline made bread, located across the street from Bustani's department store. Joe told him that he had given Cotton Brothers Baking Company in Alexandria the option to buy his bakery. The option would begin at 12 noon that day. This meant that Joe Huval could still sell his bakery any time before 12 noon that day. Frem seized the moment and on the spot told Joe, Alfred and I will buy 50% and you stay in the company. I'll make you rich. It was now 10.30 a.m. The option was operative in 90 minutes. In an hour and a half, Frem would be closed out. He had to move quickly, but Frem was never slow. Frem rushed back to the store and to Alfred. He gave Alfred a quick study of the facts, what facts he knew. Frem had already been in a bakery once in 1920 when he made cream puffs as a 17-year-old boy but he saw the picture clearly. Alfred was a money man. Frem had some, but not enough to cut the deal. Together, they rushed across the street to the bakery. Joe showed them the books. The books were cooked along with the bread. The bakery owed $40,000. The books did not show. No matter, the clock was ticking. It was 11.30 a.m. now, just 30 minutes to go. Joe agreed with the Bustani brothers on the price. Joe would sell 50%, Frem 25%, and Alfred 25%. Joe would retain 50%. Judge Wilma Dalfers was Joe's lawyer who held the company's legal files. So they rushed to his offices. He started drawing up papers. The minutes ticked by. They signed the papers at 11.55 a.m., issued the stock, and called Bill Cotton in Alexandria, Louisiana, five minutes before the option period, to tell him his option was canceled because Joe Huval had already sold. Frem Bustani had become part of Evangeline Made Bread, and Evangeline Made Bread had become his life. Making cream puffs wasn't much of a good training ground for Frem to now run the bakery as he immediately took over as executive vice president and CEO. Bread was baked at night. The business of the bakery took place during the day. To master both, because Frem Bustani just had to know more about his business than anyone else, he worked virtually around the clock. Within 18 months, the bakery had doubled in size and profits. Frem, the businessman, caught the eye of everyone with whom he dealt. He was absolutely brilliant. Within five years, Frem bought Alfred's stock. In 1961, Frem purchased Joe's 50%. Now, Evangeline Maid was all his. Frem now had to further expand. His motto was, advance or you're going backwards. Frem always moved forward. He bought the Bond Bakery in New Orleans and in 1965 built a multi-million dollar state-of-the-art bakery and took over that market with Bunny Bread. 
Now he was selling more bread than all of his statewide competitors combined. The bread business in Louisiana was truly friends. His business genius was already legendary.